Welcome to Module 5. This module discusses asthma attack warning signs and what to do during an asthma attack. In this module, you'll learn early and late warning signs for an asthma attack, what to do during an asthma attack, and how colds can affect asthma. Prevention of asthma attacks is a key component of asthma management. It's important to recognize your individual symptoms or warning signs that occur before an asthma attack. Using a peak flow meter or symptom self-monitoring can be useful to increase your awareness of how your asthma is doing. It's also important to understand the factors that make asthma worse, what to do when warning signs occur, and how to self-adjust your medicines using your asthma action plan. Many asthma patients have predictable feelings or symptoms for a long time before they actually have trouble breathing or have an asthma attack. It's important to keep a lookout for these symptoms each day since they can be early warning signs of asthma. Early warning signs should be written down in your asthma action plan. The earlier the warning signs are recognized, the earlier you can begin treatment. Early treatment may avoid the need for emergency treatment. If any warning signs occur, checking your peak flow can give you more information about how bad the asthma is getting. Sometimes symptoms can appear mild, but peak flow can show that asthma is seriously out of control. Peak flow monitoring is not recommended for children under 6 years old. The presence of early warning signs means that the asthma patient is in the yellow zone of the action plan. Late warning signs mean you are in the red zone and need immediate medical care. Using both peak flow and symptoms is the best way to assess the severity of asthma. The zone of the asthma action plan is best figured out by considering both symptoms and peak flow. If either indicates the red zone, then you are in the red zone. If neither is in the red zone, but one is in the yellow zone, then you are in the yellow zone. Late warning signs include wheezing that gets worse even after rescue medicine has been given, breathing that gets faster even after rescue medicine has been given, and difficulty breathing which includes nostrils flaring, pale skin, blue-gray color around the lips. Call 911. Increased coughing interfering with breathing. Skin cold and sweaty. Retractions of the muscles in the neck and between ribs. Breathing fast grunting or wheezing, stomach muscles tense, difficulty walking or talking in full sentences. Parents and caregivers should help teach children with asthma to be good communicators about their asthma. Your child will have feelings about having asthma which you should encourage them to share. They will have days with asthma symptoms. It's critical for the caregiver to learn about these feelings and symptoms in order to help the child become healthier and symptom-free over time. Keep a record of these symptoms. Notice patterns. Some symptoms, like stomach ache, could be overlooked as an early asthma warning sign unless the caregiver is noticing and tracking their child's symptom patterns. The most important things you can do during an asthma attack are Get out your asthma action plan and keep it on hand. Give asthma medicines as directed by the action plan. Remove yourself from anything that is triggering asthma symptoms. Seek medical help as needed. Have the phone number of the clinic or consulting nurse close by. To reduce discomfort and symptoms during an asthma attack, give medicine as listed on the asthma action plan. Calm down if possible. Anxiety about asthma sometimes makes the symptoms worse. Reduce activity level if having moderate to severe symptoms. Find a comfortable position. Provide privacy because embarrassment can make it hard to focus on using medication and calming down. Use your breathing exercises. See Module 10. For example, belly breathing is helpful for kids and adults. Get a glass of water. A dry throat or dehydration can make symptoms worse because the airways may become more reactive. Remember, it's never wrong to call 911 if you think you can't breathe. If your asthma symptoms are getting worse, there are some important actions you should take. First, you should get out your asthma action plan. 
Follow the plan's directions from your provider and remove asthma triggers if possible. Use relaxation techniques, such as speaking in a calm voice, providing privacy, or distractions such as doing a puzzle or watching a video. Track asthma symptoms or peak flow for worsening signs of asthma. Have a plan for what to do next if things are getting worse. Don't be alone or leave a child alone during these times because symptoms can get worse quickly. Relax and decrease activity level. Write down medicine use until symptoms calm down. Get medical advice according to your asthma action plan. For example, call the clinic for mildly increasing symptoms or call 911 if symptoms become severe. When asthma symptoms suddenly worsen and relief is not provided by usual medicines or other actions, emergency treatment is needed. Knowing what to try and how to get the help needed if those measures do not work is the key to stabilizing respiratory function. When you call 911, the dispatcher on the phone asks if it's a medical emergency and asks for more details about the patient. They would want to know about the person's history of asthma and what medicines they usually take and if your rescue medicine is helping. An emergency medical technician or EMT would arrive first in an aid car, fire engine or ladder truck depending on who was closest. It should be a matter of minutes until they reach you but depending on where you are and when you call it could take longer. If the situation is more critical, additional support might be called and arrive a few minutes later. Colds or viruses are the most frequent asthma triggers that lead to asthma attacks. You should watch for asthma signs and symptoms at the first sign of a cold. Use a peak flow meter when you have signs of a cold to check on asthma control. Some providers will tell adults or parents of children with asthma to begin taking controller medicine along with your rescue medicine at the first sign of a cold. People with asthma and their families should get a flu shot every year. People with asthma often get much sicker than other people if they get the flu because their asthma gets worse. A cold is a respiratory viral infection that can affect your nose, throat, sinuses, and ears. The common cold is passed from person to person or spread in the air from sneezing and coughing. Colds are usually caused by viruses. Colds can occur at any time of the year but are more common during the fall and winter months. Symptoms of colds may include runny or stuffy nose, fever and sore throat, cough, hoarseness, red eyes, swollen lymph nodes in the neck, headache, poor appetite, loss of energy, and muscle aches. If you get a cold, the best thing to do is to get plenty of rest, drink lots of fluids, and try to stay comfortable. There is no cure for a cold. Antibiotics do not help a viral cold. If fever lasts for more than two days, you should contact your medical provider. The most important thing to do about colds is to prevent them. Cold prevention includes Covering your nose and mouth with a tissue or your sleeve when sneezing, coughing, or blowing your nose. Throwing out used tissues in the trash as soon as you can. Washing hands frequently, especially when you are sick or around someone who is. Keeping hands away from face, especially eyes and nose. Trying to stay home if you have a cough and fever. Also, don't share things contaminated with respiratory germs. Don't share food, utensils, or beverage containers with others. Making sure that people get enough sleep and eat well also helps to prevent colds. Try to avoid large crowds in fall and winter, especially with babies less than two months old, as someone likely has a cold. Wearing a mask in public if you have a cold is also a good idea, now that COVID-19 has made us used to doing this. There are some home treatment options for a cold. You should have the sick person drink lots of clear fluids, especially warm drinks or soup. 
You can use salt water drops, a quarter teaspoon of salt to one cup water, to relieve a stuffy nose if it interferes with eating or sleeping. A steamy shower or bowl filled with warm water to inhale the steam by standing over the bowl with a towel over the head can also help relieve congestion. Using Vaseline, petroleum jelly, around the sick person's nose will help prevent it from becoming sore. It's important to get the ill person extra rest. If possible, elevate the head of the sick person's bed a little. This can help relieve congestion. Sometimes you need to contact your health care provider. Call the doctor if you or your child have any of the following symptoms. Difficult or fast breathing. Fever that lasts for more than two days. Fever over 39 degrees Celsius or 102 degrees Fahrenheit. Nasal discharge lasting more than 14 days. Earache. Yellow or green eye discharge. Cough that lasts for more than two weeks or becomes worse, more productive, or barky. Headache or stiff neck. Sore throat and fever that lasts for more than two days. If you or your child seem sicker than a regular cold or you are worried. Key points from this module are Try to prevent colds and avoid other asthma triggers. Pay attention to asthma warning signs. Use your asthma action plan. Try to relax and monitor asthma symptoms. It's never wrong to call 911 if you think you can't breathe.